As India takes on the title of the world's most populous nation, one question that looms ever larger thanks to climate change is how to feed 1.4 billion people. Small-scale farming families, who account for the majority of India's people, complain of crops withering under record high temperatures, cycles of drought and extreme rainfall, and pest infestations. Fred Desam Lazaro has our report from southern India. It's produced in partnership with the Pulitzer Center and part of Fred's series, Agents for Change. The consultation is usually brief with a quick diagnosis. When they get big, they infest the field. And prescription for a new insecticide spray. So two milliliters in each liter of water. This plant clinic is one of several so-called village knowledge centers set up by the nonprofit MS Swaminathan Research Foundation to help farmers cope with myriad challenges, especially those brought on by the changing climate here. Before we used to have pests, but now the quantity or number we have to deal with is much higher. Like most small-scale family farmers, K. Subramaniam doesn't have irrigation systems, relies entirely on rainfall, and must deal with increasingly unpredictable weather conditions. Ten years ago, we had clear seasons. Rain in the rainy season, we could plant when the sun was out. Now rain has become very erratic. There's too much rain. Sometimes there's no rain. Sometimes it even rains during the harvest, and that causes more losses. It's been unseasonably hot in March and April, which he worries will add stress on the crop. But to protect his verdant paddy fields from pests, it's ringed with rows of unrelated species like lentils to repel bugs, an approach he learned after consulting with the Swaminathan Foundation, where veteran scientist G. N. Hariharan is a leader. It is a two-way process. So by listening to them or sitting with them, we can understand where exactly the issues are. The goal, he says, is to help farmers adopt sustainable practices and to develop hardier crops. Getting the saline tolerant genes from One example, cultivating more saline tolerant species of rice, a key staple crop in a country with 4,600 miles of coastline. When sea level is increasing, most of our production system along the coastline are going to get uh, inundated with seawater and uh, after that the uh, area will be selenized and our normal crops cannot be grown. The foundation has, has focused on resilience and adaptation. We know that already there are changes which cannot be reversed and therefore there has to be adaptation. Dr. Soumya Swaminathan is a pediatrician and until recently the World Health Organization's chief scientist during the pandemic. She now chairs the foundation named after her father. The whole aim was to really take science to societies. Nearly 60 years ago, M.S. Swaminathan used science to launch India's so-called Green Revolution. It transformed India into one of the world's leading producers of major crops like wheat and rice. Okay. However, the widespread use, most experts say overuse, of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides has degraded soil quality. That's pushed farmers to use even more chemicals to sustain productivity and contain disease. Climate change has further aggravated the problem. Somya Swaminathan says the challenge now is to bring a balanced approach to India's food production. Keeping in mind that you have to feed 1.4 billion people, so the changes cannot be done in a way that compromises food production and the self-sufficiency that we have today. The foundation's approach is to get critical information to farmers, sending audio messages with meteorological data to help inform what crops or seed varieties to plant and the best time to plant, and how to diversify crops for income and improved nutrition, adding protein and vegetables. Today, you know, we, everyone has a mobile phone in their hands. We have artificial intelligence, for example, that offers a lot of potential. How do we see that those actually benefit, particularly the, the most small and marginalized uh, farmers? Arjunan Jayaraman says he has benefited. He grows okra alongside the family's rice fields and for years tried to control pests with chemical products. Today he has an organic approach. The crop is robust, protected it turns out by marigolds and sunflowers, flowers that take the brunt of a pest that attacks the okra. 
and Jayaraman now has his own beehives. When I was using inorganic methods of farming, the honeybee population declined because we used more pesticides. Experts say the key challenge is to adapt and scale such models across a vast nation with varied landscapes, soils, social mores and unpredictable weather. It is a real day-to-day uh, -day concern. Abhishek Jain is with the Delhi-based Council on Energy, Environment and Water. Almost 8 in 10 Indians are living in districts which are going to be uh, climate vulnerable. Areas which were traditionally flood prone are becoming drought prone and areas which were traditionally drought prone are becoming flood prone. So almost 40% of India's districts are showing this swapping trend. Exacerbating the challenges for the agriculture sector, a lack of workers. To create employment for India's growing youthful population, the government has emphasized manufacturing, trying to lure multinational companies to build their factories in India. That's likely to accelerate the urbanization of this country with profound impacts on rural agricultural communities. Arjunan Jairaman says farming is becoming increasingly lonely and devalued today. We used to have plenty of people to work because in the home, the mother, the father, the child, all the siblings, they worked in the field. But today, they're going outside, working in companies. Dr. Swaminathan says rural prosperity will be critical to India's future food security. Young people growing up in rural areas, perhaps in agricultural families, they need to see hope in pursuing an agricultural profession. But at the same time, they also have a good you know, physical and mental quality of life. That will require agricultural-based industries like food processing, which in turn require hefty investment in better infrastructure, storage facilities, roads and schools in rural areas. And in a rapidly urbanizing country, Jairaman says he hopes people become more aware of where its food comes from, returning the traditional reverence he was raised with for farm work. He cites a Tamil proverb, if you don't have mud on your feet, you won't see food on your plate. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Fred D. Sam Lazaro in Puducherry, India. And a reminder, Fred's reporting is in partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.